You take your last breath in the eye gas. Then you slowly pull it off your face. The light breeze that blows in your face feels like an icy hurricane. Slam! The door behind you closes shut and the key turns in the lock. Someone pushed you in the back and you fall head first on the floor. It's dark. Something's covering your head. You realize your hands are finally untied, so you carefully take that thing off. What the? You throw the sack away and look around, astonished. It's your apartment. Someone grabbed you, put a sack on your head, drove you for the better part of an hour, took away your smartphone, and then threw you back in your home? You get up and notice a small piece of paper on the floor next to the door. You pick it up, unfold it, and read the words written on it. 365 days. Then you're free. Chilled inside, you grab the door handle, but it's stuck. You check the windows next, but they have shutters. A new addition. Well, let's investigate what it's all about. Day two. Turns out you have a fridge full of food for a week and access to the internet, but can't reach out to anyone except with text messages. Even worse, everybody thinks you've gone to another country, and even your boss allows you to work remotely. Your messages asking for help transform as soon as you send them, so you can't tell anyone the truth. You're on your own now, and a feeling of despair starts to gnaw on you. Day seven. You're in the hall, looking at the front door, frozen in terror. There are two bags of groceries big enough to keep you going for a week right in front of you. Someone must have come at night and left them. There's a note, too, saying 358 days. Shaken, you take the bags to the kitchen and start unloading them into the fridge. The first week of your isolation wasn't bad at all, though. Previously, your life was divided into good old 9 to 5 and weekends, and you were stuck in the routine, just like so many others. Now, you've built your own schedule and enjoy it. No more early commuting to the office and late coming back. You sleep more, and sleep better too, because you're not worried about being late. You can turn on your laptop just as soon as you open your eyes in the morning, and pretend you've been busy if you're actually late. What bothers you, just a little bit, is a lack of human interaction. Luckily, you've never been much into parties and stuff, so music and podcasts help cope with the absence of live human voices. Day 30. Someone keeps coming every week during the night, leaving food for the next week. You wanted to catch them and stayed up two nights in a row once, but no one came. Yet once you gave up and fell asleep, you found the bags in the morning, as usual. Meanwhile, the new daily routine starts to get at your nerves. You can't go outside and stretch your legs properly, so you tested your captors and ordered a treadmill online. It came during one of the weekends, at night, with a bag of groceries. <laughs> Figured. But the worst is your inability to talk with anyone. Okay, you're an introvert, but even you need some live communication once in a while. I begin feeling really lonely. G60. After two months of total isolation, you started talking to yourself. There are still online chats, but they don't feel like you're talking to real people anymore. Being cut off from the world, you're more stressed out than ever. Every little trouble seems huge and makes you either depressed or angry. You've also gained some weight. Under this much stress, you needed something to let off the steam and started eating more, favoring sweets and snacks. Your captors don't seem to mind your diet either. When you're running low on food, you get new bags, even if it's not time yet. To let your mind off the budding depression, You've been thinking of a way to catch them when they come next. You've laid an elaborate trap at the front door. A contraption you didn't even think you were capable of making. Now all you have to do is wait for guests. Day 63. The trap was genius, but it ultimately failed. Somehow, your captors still came in without being caught. And what's more, they carefully dismantled the whole thing and neatly put all of its parts in their places in your home. What snobs. You left them a note saying, please clean the apartment next time. Day 70. They did. Day 90. Whatever you felt up to this moment has gotten much worse. 
you've been trying to cope with depression and stress with food, music, yoga, running on your treadmill, movies, and video games. But the initial excitement of every new activity leaves you very quickly. You sleep a lot, but still wake up groggy, as if you didn't just take a 12-hour nap. When you're awake, nothing interests you anymore. You do your daily job automatically, chatting with colleagues and the boss without any inspiration. And the last time you wrote to your friends or family was two weeks ago. You just can't think of anything to talk to them about. One thing that actually entertained you a bit was asking your captors to clean your windows. Another note. You were pretty sure they would, and they did, but they also left a note. It said, cleaning in your bedroom was awkward. Mind moving your bed away from the window next time? V-180. You don't know when it happened, but you somehow lost interest in everything, even yourself. You stopped combing your hair and grew a shaggy beard. Pieces of food get stuck in it when you eat, but you don't care. You walk around the apartment in your pajamas and don't remember when you last changed them. Worse, you don't even enjoy food anymore. You just drink your morning joe when you get up, but you don't remember why. Good news, you've lost weight. Bad news, you often forget to eat during the day at all, and you keep getting thinner. Those bags under your eyes are notable too. You're almost always sleepy, yet sleep just won't come more often than not. You lie in bed, tossing and turning for hours, only to get up and back to work, even at night. But your productivity levels are at their lowest anyway. You can't focus and blankly stare at the screen. Good thing your job doesn't require a lot of creativity. Day 240. You've completely lost track of time since you've been trapped inside your home. The date on your laptop says it's been eight months, but weeks pass as one long, never-ending day. Your condition got even worse. You can't sleep in your bed now. As soon as you lie down, your body starts aching all over, whatever position you take. With your lack of healthy nights, you start getting episodes of micro-sleep. You just zone out for a few seconds and then wake up with a jolt. Once or twice, you caught yourself right before sending an email that you didn't remember typing at all. The text in it was complete gibberish, something you dreamed of, no doubt. Today, you looked in the mirror and didn't recognize yourself. You were looking at a stooped guy, thin as a stick, with an unkempt beard and hair and an unhealthy pallor. The eyes were the worst, though. Dark and wrinkles. You turned away fast. Date 270. You're working after another sleepless night and you hear the key turning in the front door's lock. This never happened before. A long forgotten feeling of excitement springs up in your chest. You get up to the chair and walk to the hall. Heart suddenly breaks through. I see looking at what you see with pieces of shoes. Look at her with your jaw dropped. She's the first live person you've seen in almost a year. You croak. Hello. And it feels coarse in your throat for the lack of practice. The woman nods and invites you to the living room. You both sit opposite each other, and she produces a photo from her inside pocket. You see it? Everything rushes back to you. Ten months ago, you met with financial troubles and were seeking a way to pay your bills. You came upon a flyer that said a group of scientists were looking for volunteers to participate in a social experiment. The pay was good, so you immediately applied and were deemed eligible. The experiment involved a year of complete isolation from other people, apart from texting. You were also to lose all memory of the arrangement. You were supposed to think it was all not your own idea for the stress to be real. decided to end the experiment prematurely because of your worsening psychological condition. 
you'll spend the remaining three months getting back to your normal life under constant supervision by doctors. With that, the woman takes out a hefty envelope from her suitcase and hands it to you. You open it and see a thick block of money inside. You're paid, says Dr. Willard. You absolutely deserve it. The screecher breaks on a wet road, eyes of the driver filled with horror, an ear-splitting bump of impact. You open your eyes to the rain falling on your face and don't see anything through the blur at first. Then your vision clears and you see the gray sky and the black spot of a face above you. Are you all right? I'm so sorry, I didn't see you. You get up with the help of the driver who hit you. Thankfully, apart from torn clothes, no serious damage has been done, and you don't even feel pain. Your exoskeleton took all the impact upon itself. The driver offers to call an ambulance, but you refuse. Still, you both wait for the police to arrive. You tell them it was your fault for crossing the street in the wrong place. They give you a warning and let you both go. At home, you take off your shirt and check the chitin plates on your side. They seem absolutely fine. Exoskeleton is such a wonderful evolutionary feature after all. The plates are hard enough to take a serious impact without breaking. Yet, they're also flexible, acting a bit like a spring when something hits them. By the way, about that hit, you clearly remember that you didn't run across the road as fast as you used to. You frown and swing your arms and legs, then bend at the waist to check your suspicions. Ah, it's becoming harder for you to move. The shell is too rigid. Ah, well, it's time to molt then. You take a couple of deep breaths and then inhale as hard as you can. You hear cracking from behind. That's the hard shell coming apart. Your body's grown and it feels awkward inside the exoskeleton. But the outer part of it doesn't grow. As opposed to the rest of you, it's not alive. You hold your breath your chest pumped up, and finally, the crack is large enough for you to take the carapace off. But first, you get up and take a small crowbar from your desk, kept there for this exact reason. You push it under the plate in your arm and free your elbow joints. Ah, it feels like freedom. The hard stuff falls on the ground, and underneath, there's a soft and wrinkly skin, getting harder as you watch. With your new and a bit bigger arms, you reach behind and help yourself out of the carapace altogether. Great. Now your pain and wrinkles and your sensitivity is spiked. Your fresh skin is tender to the touch. It won't tolerate any stress. It'll take a night for the new exoskeleton to harden and become protective. So you lie on the bed again and soon fall asleep. In the morning, you're covered with hard plates again. Good. The phone vibrates, and you see a reminder. It's Saturday, time for your weekly sledding race. You quickly dress, take your sports bag, and leave. You decide to ride your motorbike to the sledding hall. No protection needed. The carapace is hard enough to take any kind of accident. The wind pleasantly ruffles your hair, and in 20 minutes, you're there. Your teammates wave at you from the top of the track, already in their sports suits. Today, you are free to try and take on the longest one, with several sharp turns with a high star. You go first. The rush of wind immediately blows in your face. The speed is getting higher every second. The first sharp turn comes. You stretch your arm to the side to slow down and turn, and you make it. But the second turn appears too quickly, and you don't react in time. It goes as if in slow motion. You approach the turn head on, trying hard to swerve, but only banking a little bit. Then you're sliding straight onto the ramp, and you're in the air, flying over it. The ground of the hall is getting closer. Smack! You're rolling in the artificial grass, protecting your head with your arms. You slowly get up, feeling your body all over for the signs of cracks in the carapace. Your teammates come over, worried. You seem to be fine, but there's a creak and a dull ache in the side when you tilt your torso to the left. You apologize and lead to the nearest hospital. The doctor inspects your carapace and orders an x-ray. 
On the picture, you see a small splinter between two plates that go straight into the soft tissue below. That's where the egg comes from. Thing is, the hard and flexible plates are firmly connected with the muscle and other tissues underneath. So if anything gets in between the plates, it goes into your body proper. The doctor takes tweezers from her desk and carefully pulls out the splinter. You feel a sharp pang and then relief. You thank her and are already moving to leave when you hear a groan from behind a curtain in the back of the office. Then the curtain shifts a bit and you see a human arm. But it looks strange, as if the good face has gone off. Something moving here, right? You look at the doctor in surprise, but she suddenly stands up and urgently sees you out the door. You decide to find out what's going on and stay near Brian, inconspicuously watching the doctor's office. They come and go, but when lunchtime comes, you see your chance. The doctor leaves and forgets to lock the door. You take a look around and sneak in while no one Is that you? A voice comes from behind the curtain. Carapace mask. The car starts to slow down and you see your chance. You spring to your feet and throw yourself onto the back door of the truck, forcing it to open. You land awkwardly, scramble to your feet and run. Behind you, the doctor cries, Stop! Please wait! but you run even faster. You manage to hitch a ride to your neighborhood and walk home from there. But when you approach your house, you see a suspicious car standing on the curb. With horror, you realize you've provided all your details to the hospital upon check-in. They know who you are and where you live. You turn around to run before they notice you, but only bump into the fake doctor again. You back off slowly but there are two large men already coming towards you from the car. You look around in panic, but the doctor raises her hand in a peace gesture and asks you to talk inside. You seem to have no choice, so you two come into your home, leaving the other men outside. When you both sit down, the doctor takes off her mask at you. It turns out she was born with a genetic anomaly. Her skeleton is not outside her body, but inside and it has a bony structure. She was laughed at during her childhood. Other kids called her Skinny Mary. So she took the old carapaces of her parents and adapted them to fit her. She dedicated the rest of her life to finding others like her, all the while hiding her real identity from everyone else. But the only one she could find so far was the man you saw in her office. He got into a car accident, and his old borrowed carapace didn't save him from injuries. And then you came by. After the story, the doctor apologized for her earlier behavior and asked you if you would like to participate in a new experiment. She wanted to give herself, that man, and other people like them an opportunity to live a normal life among others. And for that, she needed parts of a carapace that hadn't been molded yet. It's safe, she assured you. The shell will grow back, as always. And after thinking for a while, you agree. She smiles and thanks you. You go to a lab Mary Wren and lie on the table on her chair. You see Jane, the injured man from her office, on a table nearby, unconscious. The doctor says she'll need to give you a general anesthetic and put you on to take samples of your carapace. You nod, and she injects the medication. You wake up with a feeling of freshness in your body. You look at yourself and see fresh skin slowly turning hard, just like the day before. Above you stands Mary. She's smiling with tears in her eyes. You look to the side and see Jake sitting on his table with a carapace clinging perfectly to his body. Well, you've probably noticed that the colder it is outside, the louder the snow crunches under your feet. It happens because when the snow compresses, teeny ice grains rub against each other. The lower the temperature, the greater the friction between the ice grains, and the louder the crunching sound is. Hey, uh, Snow, can you hold it down over there? Thanks. <laughs> Adult cats only meow to communicate with us humans. 
kittens can meow at their moms, but grown cats don't interact with each other this way. Scientists have even found that these animals are great manipulators when it comes to cat-human dialogue. Cats can change the pitch of their meows so that they sound more like crying babies. They've long figured out that this way, they get more food and attention. A reindeer's eyes change color from gold in the summer to baby blue in the winter. Such a color shift improves the animal's vision because it influences the way the light gets reflected through the retina. Escalator brushes weren't designed to clean our shoes. They were invented for much more important safety reasons. You see, escalators tend to break when people stand too close to their edges. Between the side of an escalator and the wall, there's a gap. It's almost unnoticeable. But if something, like a piece of clothing, gets inside, it may get stuck in the maze of motors and gears. Then the escalator can not only break down, but also damage the foreign object. Escalator brushes prevent such accidents by steering you away from nearing the gap. As soon as you feel the bristles on your leg, you instinctively move away. Just one bolt of lightning will provide enough energy for a two-slice toaster to work for 84,000 minutes. It's also enough time to cook almost 100,000 slices of toast. Really? Getting goosebumps when you're frightened goes back to the times when you could only fend off a predator if you look scarier than your opponent. When you get goosebumps, all the tiny hairs on your body stand up, supposedly making you bigger and more intimidating. Yeah, that works for me. Roosters can be exceptionally loud. And the question is, how do they not go deaf if this thundering noise is coming right out of their beaks? Simple. They have a natural mechanism that works as built-in earplugs. Once a rooster opens its beak and gets ready to crow, its auditory canals close off and no sound can come in. That's not quite fair, is it? Airlines have minimized the space allotted to our gluteus maximus from a comfy 34 inches per seat to a tight 29. Candy's confusing. Some familiar favorites have shrunk over the decades. Here's a word for when the amount you buy shrinks, but the price remains the same. Shrinkflation. But what do you call it when just the price shrinks? Not only have library fines been shrinking, some libraries have ditched them altogether. Ironically, this made their losses shrink too. People return more books when they aren't penalized. As you age, it's harder to lose weight everywhere, except the brain. After age 40, we lose about 5% of our brain weight a decade. We shrink each day that we spend walking or sitting. The pads between our vertebrae get compressed by the weight of all the spine above them. But these pads puff up again while we sleep. Until we hit 40, when those discs stop plumping up like they used to. On average, men will lose about an inch and women will lose two inches. Not the gum we chew with our teeth, but the gums holding them together. As we age, our gums recede, giving the impression that our teeth are getting longer. Hence the expression, long in the tooth. A Microsoft study found that while people had an average attention span of 12 seconds in the year 2000, it's now dropped to 8 seconds. That's less than a goldfish. They will focus for 9 seconds. The ads we watch are designed to shrink. One shot, commercials get cut into a variety of shorter lengths. After you've seen the one minute version, expect a 45 second, 30 second, and a 15 second version to follow. 15 seconds is plenty because the time we need to pick up media cues has also shrunk. That's why the action in old movies seems so slow. Throughout the 1900s, product jingles for brands like Coke and Pepsi were written as songs complete with verses and bridges. Today, the 30-second version of a commercial is the most common show. It's simply not enough time for the whole song, but you can still fit in We Are Farmers, da 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 dum 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 Around 360 million years ago, there was so much oxygen in the air that the Earth was home to giant insects. Some of them could spread their wings up to 28 inches in length. That's a big bug. The word OK stands for all correct. Yup, 200 years ago, it was fashionable to go around and misspell things for fun. When a newspaper editor wrote all correct with an O and a K, somebody picked it up. 
Our hands and toes wrinkle when we spend time in the water in order to improve our grip when trying to get wet or submerged objects. Before trees appeared on Earth, the land was overtaken with giant mushrooms that could reach 24 feet in height. That's as tall as a giraffe. Before lobsters became a delicacy that only rich people could afford, they were considered a low-quality food that was only served to the poor a few hundred years ago. Even fishermen used lobsters to bait fish and fertilize their crops. Hey, camels have three eyelids to protect their eyes from sand. Two of the eyelids have eyelashes, and the third one is a thin membrane that acts as a wiper that cleans dirt from the eyes. Unlike regular eyelids, the membrane layer closes horizontally. We blink almost 30,000 times per day. If we were to count how long our eyes remain closed, it would equal a half an hour. The infinity sign is actually called a lemniscate. And no matter how big a number you think of, it's always closer to zero than infinity. The rarest blood type isn't AB negative with something called RH null blood. In the last 50 years, only 43 people were found to have it. Because it's so difficult to find, it's considered the golden blood, and it's worth as much as the precious metal. You know, rain has no scent, but that lovely smell that we sniff when it rains comes from bacteria that live in the soil. Rain also gets the smell from plant oils and minerals released from the soil. A man named Steve Feltham holds the Guinness World Record for the longest time spent looking for the Loch Ness Monster. He camped at Loch Ness for over 28 years. I hear that when he was tired, you could see him dragging. Old mattresses are notably heavier than the new ones because of the stuff they collect during their lifetime. This debris is flaked off skin, dust mites, human and animal hair, sand, soil, pollen, and many more things you probably don't want to hear about. Now, seahorses pair up for life and often travel around together holding each other's tails. By the way, it's the male that carries the couple's egg. You know about albinism, but what about its opposite, melanism? Melanistic animals have too much dark pigment in their skin, feathers, or hair. And unlike their light-colored counterparts, they look almost black. The word facetious has 5,000 alphabetical orders. If you consider why of them, then the word facetious has all sorts. And in case you're wondering, almost is the longest English word with all its letters in alphabetical order. The cougar is a Guinness record holder because it has more names than any other animal. It's known as the panther, mountain lion, puma, and 40 other English, 25 native North American, and 18 native South American names. Here, kitty. Dragonfly has moved back about 7 miles in the past 12,000 years due to erosion at the base. Luckily, the rate of this process has reduced over the past few decades, and the waterfall might eventually stop moving and stay where it is now. The first watermelons were extremely bitter or simply bland. They were originally cultivated in Africa just for their water content. If you recycle a single glass jar, you'll have enough energy to keep your TV running for four hours. Astronauts claim that space smells like a searing steak or barbecue. Exactly this odor hangs around after someone finishes a spacewalk. Other astronauts say space smells like heated metal. Storm clouds may seem to turn dark, but it's just an illusion. Thin clouds on a sunny day let the light through and scatter all the colors of the light spectrum. This makes us perceive the clouds as white, but the thicker clouds are, and the more water they contain, the less light they transmit. Thus, they look darker. Greens don't really change color. They just lose their green pigment. The green usually moves the other colors, red, orange, and yellow. So without it, those warmer hues become visible. And leaves lose this green pigment, chlorophyll, in the front because there's less sunlight the chlorophyll can come into food. Your own body makes bug bites well and itch. When a mosquito breaks your skin, your immune system perceives the insect saliva as a foreign substance and starts making it to them. That stuff sends more blood to the bite, which causes the carrier to swell. Histamine also sends a signal to the nearby nerves, making you itch. 
Zebras probably have their stripes as protection from bug bites. The spirits seem to dazzle the insects, and they can't make a controlled landing. They either come in too fast and try to avoid the collision at the last moment, or they bump into the zebra and bounce off. Most salt in oceans and seas comes from land. Because the sky is overcast, and without sunlight, your body produces melatonin. The very hormone that makes you sleepy at night. The rhythmic rain sound is comforting and creates so-called pink noise, which decreases your brain activity and improves your sleep quality. The ocean isn't blue, per se. It just seems like it. Its trademark bluish hue appears because the water absorbs all colors from the warmer part of the light spectrum, yellow, orange, and red. This works like a filter that leaves behind the blue-green color we can see. Now, your dog licks you because it makes them feel good. It releases endorphins in the animal's body, making your pooch feel safe, comfortable, and happy. It also relieves most of the stress your pet feels. Plus, licking is one of the ways your dog you can show you affection. Now, cats regularly lick them separately and skin oil from gathering on their fur. But it also makes their coats less waterproof than, let's say, a dog's. That's why when cats get wet, their food becomes very heavy, and they don't like it one bit. Your stomach is big growls when you're hungry, because your digestive muscles are contracting to sort of warm up in preparation for the coming meal. They continue to contract even after you eat. You just can't hear it anymore, because the food in your stomach is mumbling the sound. Now, no one yeah. knows for sure. Mm. Why we call it Black Friday? Probably because stores are open in the middle of the night. But originally, it was likely used to describe all the heavy traffic depending on this day. A hippo skin gives off a red oil that protects the animal from sunburn. Yes, you could say hippos use sunblock. Only their non-natural SPF doubles as an antibiotic cream too. Unless you get lost is the whole point. such sensitive antlers that they can feel a fly landing on them. There are real flying dragons in the rainforest of Southeast Asia. But if you're expecting a massive fire-breathing reptile soaring over the poor townspeople, tough luck. It's a tiny little lizard about the size of your hand. Or it doesn't really fly. It glides over a short distance. Or falling with style. You might know of poisonous plants and venomous reptiles and arachnids. But there are poisonous birds, too. The toxins in their bodies, feathers, and skin make it dangerous for predators to eat them. Starfish can cover their prey with their stomachs and eat it outside the body. Then they simply bring their stomachs back inside. Well, that's handy. Their relatives, sea cucumbers, can do the same party trick. Except they leave part of their guts behind to scare them <laughs> and sneakiest birds on earth. A raven will follow one another to find out where the other guy is hiding food. Then the sneaky stalker takes it for himself. But the brainiest of them all is the new Caledonian crow. It makes complex tools like hooks and spears to get insects out from their hiding holes in trees and branches. A koala's fingerprints are almost identical to human ones. Dolphins have highly developed communication. They call each other by name. 
that is, each dolphin responds to a specific sound. Mostly, they say, stop calling me Flipper. A bird's feathers weigh more than its skeleton. So there. The most fearless beast on Earth that really doesn't care is the honey badger. They have virtually no enemies because they're not afraid of anyone. One honey badger can take on a whole pack of lions and come out unscathed. These hardcore honey lovers are also resistant to snake venom. So yeah, there's that. Their cousin, the European badger, builds extensive underground burrows called sets. They have tunnels and room-like offshoots for everybody. Foxes and rabbits are welcome to share the home as long as they abide by these strict hygiene rules. The praying mantis has an ear between its legs. The insect uses it as a sonar, kind of like bats. Sea turtles are constantly crying. They're not sad or anything. The weeping is only because they excrete excess salts from the body through tears. The black swip is a mysterious bird that lives, eats, and even sleeps in the sky. They don't land for months at a time, which is why so little is known about them. The distance they fly over a lifespan is like going to the moon 14 times. Fish can fly too. Thanks to their wing-like fins, Flying fish can soar a distance of about 600 feet, almost as long as two football fields. They need flight to escape from predators. A Google is a number followed by 100 zeros. I dare you to write that down, counting the zeros one by one. A computer term, there's a bug in the system, emerged in 1946 when an actual moth got trapped inside a relay calculator at Harvard. Squirrels accidentally plant millions of trees every year because they forget where they bury their acorn. Oh, that's nuts. A rainbow that happens at night is called a moon ball. They're mostly white and very rare. The first microwave was invented by Lucy Spencer in 1945. The engineer received only two bucks for his discovery. Oh, wow. oh, look at this. A giraffe's neck. You remember the claw machine, right? Yeah. Oh, that has a new one. Cool. Okay. It is not even VR. Um, the claw? Let me touch it. No, it's It's all PlayStation stuff. It's a network adapter. Huh. Pull it. Catch it. Or is it? I got that. Pull it. Catch it. Or is it? Shoot. Oh, no. That means nothing. Okay. That's good. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna show you where they go. Yeah, I'm gonna show you where they go. Take your pelt, yeah. Okay. This is, I'm, once I complete every level, they go around. What is this? Yeah, it's, it's a puzzle. The more oh, pieces you get, the more, um... Oh, cool. Or picture of it makes. Mm -hmm. oh, and, you, and, like, you know those little things I got? Mm -hmm. They go around on you, so I got this. Oh, well, that's a lot of pieces. What do you mean? Up, up there. Yeah, you have to that's cool. complete everything. Yeah, look. So you hit them, and they'll do funny things. Splash. Cool. And then they go back, nothing happens. Fish. Yeah. 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 You beat up everybody! Yeah, look, this one actually reacts too, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just got this one to play, and, um, since I have a car. <laughs> Audrey. Woo! Woo! And then this tells me all the artifacts that they are. Watch. That's their old logo. Ah. So good. Uh, there's also this one. You know, a little PlayStation game back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this one where you have a monkey in each one. He's trying, you know the game Knack? Yeah. He's trying to build that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Guys, there's like guys everywhere recording. That's cool. Boop. What's PS Vita? These are every PS games they have PlayStation 3. Oh. And then it's Uncharted, but robot. And I just got the adapter and the PSVR. 
That is so Remember, cool. remember yeah. when we're playing the games? Like, yeah. you can put on the headphone? Watch. You can put that on? No. Uh. It's a video, it's the trailer. Ah, uh, okay. I'll like watch the trailer. You, you did that already, though? Yeah, but this one, I, I don't really like it. See, you have to look around and get you all dizzy and your neck hurts after a while. See? But do you have it? No. <laughs> That's a VR game? Yeah. I could download it. Yeah, you too. got money. Let me kiss. Come to bed soon. Watch TV, be quiet. You can change the color, you know the motion controls, right? Maybe change the colors. Oh, that's cool. I like it having a green. Limey green? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go do another mission.